Today on Q&A Mondays, we're talking about roof penetrations for standing seam metal roofing. How do you keep them weather tight, and what type of maintenance is involved? Oh, yeah, that. that was done well. Yeah. All right, so let's we can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett with Sheffield Metals. Today we're talking about roof penetrations for standing seam metal roofing. I've got a great panel today, I've got Lori reynolds Morrow here, Adam Mazella, and Jeff Hawk. And we're going to be talking about, like I said, roof penetrations, what is involved in keeping them weather tight, what type of maintenance is involved with them as well. So first, can you guys tell me a little bit, um, why would a standing seam metal roof need to be penetrated at all? What are some conditions that would lend themselves to that? I think the most common penetration you're going to see on a metal roof is uh, a vent pipe. Every house, most buildings are going to have one for the restrooms and, you know, venting and things like that nature. Um, other common penetrations, you know, more, more commercial buildings are roof hatches, uh, skylights, mechanical units, you know, pretty much anything you can think of that, you know, might not fit inside the space, but it can be mounted on a roof. Right. And when it comes to roof penetration, why is important that those are paid more attention to, or, or let's say paid a, a good amount of attention to, to keep them specifically weather tight? Basically, you're going to want to really, really look hard at those areas because those are going to be large holes in your roof. You know, standing seam metal roofing is all about concealed clips, concealed fasteners, um, having a solid roof surface with no, you know, with nothing penetrating through the roof system to hold it on. So when you get into penetrations, those are going to be the main areas that could fail if it's not flashed yeah. properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a metal roof, if, if you've got the right panel on the right slope, generally your, your problem points uh, really aren't the panels themselves, but there could be uh, opportunity for intrusion at the flashing zones, and uh, that would include penetrations. Okay. So when it comes to penetration points, how do you keep them weather tight? What are some good practices there? Well, the first thing to do would be to separate them. Are they a round penetration or a square penetration? And then there are conditions to address that, um, sp those specifically. So why would those be different? It's going to depend on what you use to flash them. Typically for your round penetrations, you're going to use a pipe boot. Uh, it's made out of EPDM rubber. Usually it has a steel ring around the flange. So when you fasten through it, it can't rip the rubber. Um, it has multiple different sizes for different size pipes and it's all labeled. So this is for uh, top ring is for two and a quarter to two and three quarter inch pipe, two and three quarters, three and a quarter inch pipe, so on and so forth. You basically cut out the diameter for the size pipe you need, slide it over the top, stitch screw it down to the deck and, or excuse me, you actually stitch screw it down to the panel. You don't want to screw it into the deck because then you're going to be pinning the pipe boot and to the decking and your panel won't be able to expand and contract. And then it gets pulled up tight. Uh, sealed around the base of the uh, vent pipe and then you put a stainless steel pipe plant on top to keep it from falling down. And that's your, typically what you're going to use for a round penetration. Um, they come in all different sizes for multiple size pipes. Uh, we use them on tubular skylights. Um, so basically anything round that's going to be our preferred method of how to flash it. The main thing to remember with these is that you want them installed on a flat surface. These are not designed to go up and over the vertical rib of yeah, a standing seam. Yeah, I was just about to ask what happens when you run into a situation where the seam falls on where that penetration point would be. Um, we have a detail for it. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> and basically we create a flat surface. So not only does the pipe boot have a flat surface to adhere to, but it also doesn't stop the expansion and contraction of a panel system. Right. Um, the panel is able to be fixed at the ridge, uh, expand at the location of where the pipe boot's being attached, and then it's also fixed at that point for the panel coming below it, and then that expansion takes place at the E. Okay. So that is our preferred method for attaching a pipe boot in the seam. And the reason for that is because if you don't have a flat surface, you know, you can bend these things and everything else, but there's going to be gaps and holes and everything. And then you're solely relying on caulking to fill those voids. Um, you know, caulking can be used as a secondary uh, precaution, but, you know, we definitely don't use it as our primary 
Um, it's a secondary defense. Because eventually UV can degrade that caulking and eventually that will fail, correct? Right. UV, UV is going to break down caulking and honestly, it's going to eventually break down the pipe mm -hmm. itself over time. So most of the time, weather type warranties um, or weather type warranties or not, these are going to be considered a maintenance item. So as your metal roof ages, you're going to want to have these inspected over time to make sure that the rubber isn't breaking down, that the pipe boot isn't sagging, or um, you know the stainless steel clamp came off and maybe the sealant broke down around the uh, top of the pipe boot and you know anything that could allow water to come in. So on top of the you know the gray EPDM, a lot of manufacturers can offer something in color. So if you've got a red roof and you you know that gray pipe boot might be unsightly to you, you can get the pipe boots in colors. Um, there's usually about a handful of them, but it, it's just kind of to lessen the contrast if you're going with, you know, a bright roof and you don't want gray or if you want, sure. if you want your pipe boot to, to just simply match it. Now, they typically cost more, um, but similar. Uh, they're going to be EPDM. They're going to be colored to match. Um, and beyond that, there are high temp pipe boots. Um, there are pipe boots in, mm -hmm. in certain scenarios, certain applications that have a uh, hot exhaust, uh, whether it's, you know, a kitchen or... Uh, you know, something with the HVAC system that you need to release heat. So beyond a round penetration, you're going to, you know, kind of be up against, you know, much different scenario for how you flash and, you know, uh, prepare a roof for a, you know, a square penetration, uh, you know, a skylight, a chimney, things like that. You know, typically on the high side, uh, as Jeff alluded to earlier, you're going to have a diverter for water, so it's not just running down right into a square penetration, pooling and ponding. Uh, there, you're going to have a diverter, or some people call it a cricket. Bottom line is you want to shed the water around that, and then the way we recommend you flash it is in our details here uh, for our uh, curb details. You basically do the same thing as a pipe in the seam details that we talked about earlier. Um, it doesn't stop the expansion and contraction of the roof system, and it keeps everything watertight. Um, it doesn't have any, it has, it has less exposed fasteners that can't uh, wiggle out over time due to limiting the expansion and contraction, and it allows everything to move. Um, it's our recommended detail for our weather type warranties, and it's been very successful. The other thing with, you know, talking about pre-manufactured curbs is what we're talking about here. They're welded. Um, those are for penetrations that are going to be downward on the roof system. They're not, that's not, you're not going to use that at the ridge if you have a penetration coming through the ridge or say at the rake of your roof. It's going to be for a penetration in the field of your roof that is downward from the ridge. Um, otherwise, you could typically, typically get away with flashing those areas um, with your standard flashing details, you know, Z closures, things like that. The only thing you want to make sure about a chimney is say you have a chimney coming down half of your gable, you want to make sure you have some way to divert that water so you're not bucking water. Okay. Again, curbs can be painted to match as well. Your metal roofing system, if you don't want a bare aluminum curb, um, it can be painted in pretty much any color you can think of. To get the same colors you can get the roof in. Let's talk about maintenance of roof penetrations, both square and round. Are there different, uh, is there different types of maintenance for both types or is there a standard type of maintenance that needs to be performed? Well, you're gonna have different maintenance because you're dealing with two different products. Um, when but maintenance comes, it's not so much maintenance as it is inspecting. Mm -hmm. You're gonna to wanna to check your pipe boots over time to make sure they aren't deteriorating. Um, if they are, then you're gonna to wanna to replace it before it gets to the point where you have a hole in your pipe boot. It's, it's not something that is hard to do. Any contractor should be able to do it. If you feel comfortable, you can probably even do it yourself. Um, you're literally taking one pipe boot off and putting one, another one over to, on top of it. You might want to get a pipe boot with a bigger base so you don't have to hit the same holes. So that way, you know, as far as attachment, you're not trying to put bigger screws in the same holes going into the panels. You can get one with a little bit larger base and just put new uh, screw holes through the panel. Um, as far as a curb goes, I wouldn't see a whole lot of maintenance unless you notice a problem. Again, the seams are welded. Uh, I don't see, I mean, if less the seams became damaged somehow or if something uh, maybe fell on that area of the roof, you might want to go up and inspect it. Um, other than that, um, if you're talking about a low slope application, uh, you want to make sure that dirt and debris isn't building up behind the uh, 
cricket area on the uh, curb so it's not holding water in that area or holding moist debris, you know, uh, leaves, uh, brush, things like that. I did, I did want to add that what I've, what I've witnessed here today is there's a, an attention that happens when you're installing a standing seam metal roof as equal when you're going to now penetrate that standing seam. And, and we have the details and the support to back that up. Um, can you guys give me some maybe common errors that you see or some things that you see often that uh, should be done a little bit differently to maximize the life of roof penetration? Well, it, it, there's that, but I, I think one of the common errors that happen is properly flashing a pipe boot, um, whether it's using trying to go over a seam um, rather than using the, the pipe and seam detail or um, everything looks great, but that last step of putting the band on the, the EPDM that's, that's attached to the pipe at the top of the pipe boot, we see that one over and over and over again, and it's kind of like, ah, I did everything right, but just forgot that. That's going to prevent it from slipping down, sliding down, you know, where it might be in great condition, but it failed because that mm -hmm. last step just wasn't yeah. taken. You know, and as far as curbs go, they get installed wrong a million different ways. Personally, I'm not a fan of stitch screwing a curb down on all four sides. Um, it's, from what I've seen, it's pretty common. Even if it's an over-under techniques to where the panels coming from the ridge are on top of the curb and then the panels going down to the eave or underneath the curb, um, they still screw all four sides down. And when you do that, most of the time, one, you're counting on just sealant to keep water out from that area and Two, you are pinning the curb and those panels in that area. So, you know, pinning the panels can lead to a lot of other things, you know, from oil canning to just counting on neoprene fasteners, again, to uh, keep your system water tight. It's, there's better ways out there to do it that are available. So I have in my travels um, actually witnessed penetrations that have gone on to standing seam roofs that looked like they probably didn't have to happen. Um, a satellite dish a homeowner doing his own solar installation. Um, what, uh, what do we have for that? What, what would go, what would resolve that for somebody before they, before they do that? How can we address that for them? Yeah, and I, I wouldn't say it's just homeowners punching it. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, a lot of times when you, you talked about solar, um, they're a solar contractor, and that's not to say that there's anything good, bad, and different about them, but it's they're technically not the roofing expert. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's easiest is to, well, let's just attach it to this roof. And mm -hmm. a lot of times attaching it means penetrating that roof. Um, you know, we, we've partnered with S5, you know, to attach, you know, a lot of people attach HVAC units. Uh, they attach solar. They attach... Uh, satellite dishes. Um, oh, signage. Yeah, signage and yeah. things like that. And I think, you know, the, the quick, easy way might be to penetrate that roof. But okay. if you're not properly flashing it, uh, you know, that's a problem area. Then you've got to properly maintain it where you can go with an S5 mm -hmm. type product and attach these things without penetrating the roof um, and, and create a low to no maintenance item uh, and avoid any uh, potential issues down the line. So, You might not get away with not putting any penetrations in the roof. Like, say, solar panels, for example, you can mount them with an S5 bracket, but the wiring might need to be coming through the roof system, and that's where, again, a pipe, you know, come through a conduit, pipe boot would be used. But that's one penetration compared to, you know, multiple per panel, you know. So... The less penetrations you can put on your roof, the better. And, you know, there's options out there when, you know, you can use them. I mean, I guess the only other thing I'd say is, you know, when we're talking about mounting equipment and things like that, you want to make sure that, you know, there are, you want to be aware of dissimilar metals, um, you know, especially if you're mounting rooftop equipment. You might have copper pipes that drain onto your roof and now you have copper drainage. Um, lightning rods, you know, use an aluminum cable instead of copper cable. Um, and just being aware, you know, that just because you're not penetrating the roof, you want to be still be aware of all the factors that go in, you know, with a metal roof system. Right. And just to kind of close this out, um, Sheffield Metals has a great partnership with S5. And uh, later on, we're going to be having a Q&A episode talking about different mounting solutions <laughs> that S5 can offer that, uh, as I said, we partner with them to 
uh, reduce the number of penetrations in your roof for mounting certain um, certain mounting options. So be on the lookout for that Q&A episode in the future. Uh, thanks everyone for joining me on today's show. I definitely learned a lot. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing Channel. Check out Sheffield Metals online. We have a lot of great information on our blog and our resources page up there. If you have any questions, you can contact us. Anything else, like I said, subscribe to the Metal Roofing Channel, and we'll catch you next time.